Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. I try to do some things a little different. I try to, you know, look at what I have collected in pens and, and see what I think might be of interest to my uh, viewers. So here's a pen I took apart. Um, interesting pencil piece here. This is a combo pen. Um, Oaski Squirrel. Uh, Jason did a review on one that I sent him. So I figured I should do a review. And, and this one just caught my eye. Uh, and it's also in good shape. It took a little bit of effort and soaking to get the uh, section apart. But it eventually came apart. You know, I spend my time, I spend days. All the pieces have been polished and, and lightly waxed. So uh, that comes through. This clip was fairly corroded, so it cleaned up very well. And I, I think this green hatch design is, is very nice. Uh, the little cream top uh, finial on, on the cap is interesting. This is a no-name pen, but it's not exactly no-name, but it does have an engraving on it, Pemco. So I think this was probably given away... Um, to, um, you know, as an advertising piece. Pemco has a number of different industries that could be associated with this. I think it's nice about this is the pencil piece works very well, and I have a number of different leads to fit it. And uh, much to my amazement, the eraser is also good. I took out the J bar and I cleaned it up. It was kind of corroded. So I cleaned these up to get the corrosion off, and then I put a coat of wax on it, which I think will help preserve it and uh, keep it working. So I'm going to uh, assemble this, uh, put a bladder in it, and uh, put a nib to paper and uh, see how it writes. So one thing about uh, exploring uh, vintage pens is just trying to figure out what they are and where they came from. And when I looked at this nib, I found some branding on the nib. It's the Southern Pen Company, and it's a dual, which would make sense because it's a dual fountain pen and pencil combo and of course it's made in USA. This was from a, an area that had a number of pen manufacturers. Nice ebonite feed in the back, looks like a nice fine nib and like I say I practice writing with it and I think it should be an interesting writing experience. So we'll delve into a little bit more of the history which is very difficult to find because you know, these are tier two, tier three manufacturers. And, you know, when fountain pens were popular, there were a number of these pen manufacturers that had a lot of different names and assembled parts, made their own parts. So it was the golden age of fountain pens back then. So this is an example of, of one of them. So from what I read on Fountain Pen Network, uh, these were uh, made in Petersburg, Virginia, where a lot of... Uh, small pen manufacturers and large ones. Apparently they made uh, a couple million a year at, at, their, at their peak. So uh, that's an interesting bit of history. So let me uh, start assembling this and putting it to its intended purpose, which is writing. At one time when I was collecting uh, fountain pens, I uh, bought a lot of combos, uh, pen and pencil combos. Uh, so this is an example of two which share a, a couple things in common. Uh, the interesting how the top of the cap is uh, done with a different type of material. You know, uh, interesting uh, plastic resin, whatever you want to call it. You know, the end here, this one doesn't have a piece that comes off with the eraser, but they made many, many of these. They're generally available for a low cost because they're not very collectible. But they are certainly interesting pens, unique examples of uh, the golden age of fountain pens when everybody used one. And it was nice to be able to have a pencil and pen in one instrument. We have some nice sunlight coming in, so I thought we would explore the interesting green plastic used in this pen. And, you know, I just enjoy all the different colors and variations of all my vintage pens and you know, regardless of whether they were expensive at the time they were made or they still have value to me. You know, someone designed this, put it together. Someone used it for a while. As I restored it, it, uh, you know, had a lot of uh, used ink in it. So 
This is not the, the most incredibly aesthetically pleasing pen, but it certainly is interesting. And I always find that uh, enjoyable just to see what the different variations they used and, and how they made uh, writing instruments for many years before the pen, fountain pen, was no longer popular. So one of those first stages is reinserting the J bar. So I'm going to come in from the pen side and as we look at the lever and we need this to align with the lever or lever. You notice there's grooves there so that makes it pretty easy to get it aligned with the lever. I need to get a tool. So before I put the J bar all the way in I'm going to assemble the pencil in because you want that J bar to be up against that eraser but not past it. So this is a nice wooden dowel with a nice um, shaped end on it and I found this to be good for doing these types of work. So we're just going to slide it in until it stops. Okay. Hopefully we can uh, look in there. I may have to bring in my trusty LED. I think you can see that that uh, is working well. Yeah, there's. we can uh, see how that is uh, in place and how the, uh, the lever has um, two pieces which line up to the grooves in that J-bar assembly. This is a classic J-bar assembly that many of the vintage pens used. So I looked in my... Uh, selection of uh, latex splatters and I thought an 18 would be a good fit and yep, it fits in there fairly well. It's not going to be very long so that's one of the challenges with these combo designs is they didn't have a big ink capacity so that's in all the way we're going to go out and we're going to mark this to cut it so we can assemble it to the section. The tool's ready. We have the sack cut to the right length. I'm going to add a little bit of wood glue to seal the end where the uh, sack is going to connect to the end of the section. I just use a little bit, and again, um, whether it's needed or not, it's worked well for me for many years, so I will continue to use this process. Uh, I did a lot of cleaning on this. This pen needed a, needed a lot of cleaning to be able to be restored. I'm going to let that dry for a couple minutes before I put the bladder on. So it just uh, dried a little bit, so it's tacky. And now we're going to use our sack spreader to open up a sack to make it easier to put on the end. Ah, it looks like it's going on well. I do a little twisting. This is usually the hardest part, especially uh, when it's uh, a nice tight fit. Oh, there we go. Everything looks like it's in good shape. So we're going to let that dry for 24 hours and then we'll ink it up. It's been a day. So the sack is uh, firmly attached to the section. And we're ready to insert into the barrel, ink it up, and put nib to paper and see how this pen writes. We always put some talc on the fresh sack so it slides in well and also I think it helps protect it, keeps it dry. And my usual thing is it's going to be lined up with the nib. It's a really good tight fit, so we're going to have to put some pressure on it, but you know it's not coming loose. We'll wipe off the talc. So there we are. And it's not perfect, but we're getting there. No, I'm happy with that. So we're going to use a green ink, obviously, for this beautifully green pen. It 
danger is doing over the camera, but we'll give it a shot. Nice bubbly action. So I'll do this three times. As I said, I like to flush the feed with ink, get the feed nice and saturated. We'll wipe it off and put nib to paper. So this is the first time I've written with this. So my first response is, is that uh, nib's a little scratchy. You can see I had a skip here at the beginning. So um, let's see what we can do to smooth this out. Before I work on the nib, we're going to look at it a little bit closer. Very interesting tipping material on there, almost like a triangle shaped. I think that's what was catching on the paper. I mean, the tines are aligned. They're in nice position. So um, I'm just going to try to smooth it out just a little bit and see if I can take that little edge off of it and make it a little smoother. I mean, you can hear that. I don't know whether this is actually going to do that much good, but we'll give it a shot. I'm impressed. It worked very nice. Just needed to take a little edge off of it. That was it. I think you can even hear that it sounds smoother. Smoothing is something I think all of us should uh, get comfortable with. Uh, you just need to uh, go to your um, local supermarket or drugstore or whatever and get one of those sanding boards that have the three different uh, grades on it. This nib just has a little bit of softness to it, and that's really the sweet spot is that vertical stroke, which you could tell by the way the uh, tipping is shaped. So I'm happy with this pen. Uh, it'll be an interesting addition to uh, my collection. So thank you for watching. May you also have interesting adventures with your pens. Uh, feel comfortable customizing them and making them work for you. Enjoy all your writing experiments, interesting adventures. Ciao.